Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode here on the Null Channel. Now, uh, this episode is a little bit different, and it's actually in re regards to a comment that a user named who, I wonder who they are, sorry, I could not help myself, brought up, and I wanted to cover what they brought up, why it's important, and uh, just some of my thoughts on it. channel. All right. So the comment who brought up on my last WSL is why I used Docker desktop instead of just installing Docker in the WSL container. And uh, for all intents, intents of purposes, I had never done anything differently and had never actually tried to install Docker directly in uh, WSL. Actually, that's not even true. I did try a while ago. And then it was like, eh, the init system, system D isn't installed, or it it kind of is there, but it's it's disabled. Um, and I gave up because I was like, if it's not, if there's not system D. So um, where this all comes from, who said that uh, they just use Docker in WSL um, and they just installed it in WSL. So there are, is no uh, Docker desktop client. And I can tell you that this works and I have tested it and I ran actually a lot of tests. I spent the last two hours testing this. Um, so I'm going to give you a short rundown of all of it and I'm going to give you my current thoughts on it. Uh, who, if you watch this, I would love to hear your thoughts on my thoughts. All right. So the, the first thing is one thing that you have to understand if you go down this route is that uh, system CTL and system D aren't enabled because Microsoft's use their own init system. And one of the reasons is WSL are just containers. So whatever WSL init or distribution you install is just a WS or a just a Linux container that runs on their custom kernel. All right. So with that in mind, they made an init system just for that. That does everything very lightweight. It's like the bare minimum of what you need. And this is pretty cool, but it does pose a problem since it doesn't use system D. So what uh, who was using and what this uh, these instructions, which I'll post a link to the instructions that who posted and I, I looked at used is a a bash file called service and all services is a generic bash file that wraps um, uh, sysv, um, init.d, and uh, maybe a few others. And it actually even wraps system CTL. It's a, just a big bash script. Um, and it exposes some bare base bones functionality. And this is another thing that we're going to get into. So the bare bones base functionality does allow you to start and stop a service but it doesn't allow you to enable a service. So to automatically start on startup, what this means, and this is one of the drawbacks that I found, and maybe there's a solution to, but I didn't find a very quick solution to, or not messy solution, I found some solutions, um, is that you have to start it every single time you start your WSL distribution. And this could potentially be even more painful because WSL, uh, is meant to shut down. And so if you are sh getting out of your terminal, it might shut down on you in the background, which means you would have to start Docker again. Um, so this could be a little bit painful. Now, you could write into a, a script um, like your profile or your bash script to uh, auto start this, but now you need to be able to add yourself to the sudoers as a no password because uh, to use service, you have to use sudo. So you need to be able to use it without a password. This is okay, but we're starting to get into the hacks to get this to work. The other thing that happens, if you want to actually expose something to your Windows installation using this or any of the other WSL installations, you're going to need to have to um, do some more hacks because WSL doesn't start 
on um, startup of Windows. So you're going to have to do some things to start WSL. And I found some hacks to do that, but we're just adding the hacks on top of each other. So this is the big major drawback I see compared to running with Docker Desktop. The other big drawback that I found is it's a lot more to install. Docker Desktop is pretty much a one click install on Windows, whereas installing Docker, um, I'll do a montage here, takes a little while. Still working. For all those of you wanting to know, yes, that's chocolate milk and it's delicious. Uh, quick story for you guys um, while we're waiting on this. Learn from my mistakes. Never, and I mean never, go to a bar with your colleagues, um, which I work with some really awesome people uh, that I would like to impress sometimes. Never go to a bar with them and order chocolate milk. Two things will happen. First, you will never live down the fact that you tried to order chocolate milk at a bar. And the second thing that will happen is you won't get chocolate milk and the waiter will look at you weird the rest of the time that you're there because they don't carry chocolate milk, which is absurd. If you are a bar, you should carry chocolate milk. It takes a little while to install that way. And another downfall is it's only available on that WSL installation because of the unique identifier and uh, namespaces and control groups. So your Windows installation isn't going to be able to, your Windows Docker wouldn't be able to uh, talk to it. Another WSL, I actually tested with multiple WSL installations and they, because of how they register control groups and C groups, cannot see each other's containers. Um, for me, this isn't as nice. Uh, I like the idea that I can hop around to any WSL distribution I like and see all the same containers. I don't want them running different ones. It's a container, it's extra overhead. They would have to all be running their own uh, Docker daemon. I'm just not as excited about that. Um, now, what this is exciting about is I'm going to do a video on trying to, or I'm going to try, and then if I succeed, I will make a video on using Podman in WSL. Uh, I haven't even looked, there's probably instructions on it, but I think it would be possible at this point. Now, it would have all the same drawbacks and I would end up using Docker on desktop anyways, because one of the things that I have learned is to keep things simple and do the simple thing. Um, we want to do other things. We want to run containers to help us solve a problem. We don't wanna to have to be dealing with the infrastructure that runs our container for us. So my biggest example or my biggest comment here is do whatever is the most simple for you and keep, folk, keep striving for that. Keep it simple and do whatever is the simplest. For me, that's running Docker Desktop. Now, if you want to run it in the WSL container, you can do it. Instead of using systemd, use service. It's very easy. I will link down below uh, what you need, um, some instructions you can follow to install it. Really, you can just use the Docker. Uh, so two things I noticed on the Docker website. So you can use the Docker install. Don't install the GPG 
uh, library that they say to install. I'll leave the instructions in the comments on which one to use, but it doesn't work on WSL. So that's kind of a bummer. The, the next thing that you have to really uh, pay attention to is you can't use system CTL and it won't enable. The other thing that I can't promise is that there won't be any oddities. I did run containers, I ran a Ubuntu and did an interactive terminal into bin bash into the Ubuntu image and everything seemed to work fine. I just don't know. I, I, I haven't used it a lot. It seems like who uses it a, a quite a bit. So um, it probably is fine and it probably works fine because it's probably using the underlying kernel. I mean, I know it is because it has to be. Um, and so that's fine. It's actually interesting because it means the WSL containers have the privileges to run services through the service command on the underlying kernel. Very cool. Um, I, I really need to dig in deeper. And the more I dig into stuff like this, the more I'll share because I plan on sharing it each time I dig into it. I want to encourage all of you to join the Discord and keep the discussions going. We learn so much from each other and uh, I, I want you all to feel like you can freely speak out in the YouTube comments and as well as in Discord. There's already some exciting stuff happening in Discord. Um, I am working on a once a month news segment on open source, Kubernetes, and uh, pretty much all things software engineering. That being said, if there's specifically articles that you guys would want, join the Discord server. There's a new news channel and uh, post the link there. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna pick the top ones um, I can't promise that all of them will make it in there if you guys flood me, but I doubt it. And I will give overviews of each of those news articles in probably a more entertaining uh, light. Uh, that's going to be it for me today. Now we know two ways to run Docker containers in WSL distributions. The power is in your hands to lever which, leverage which one is best for you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, hit the bell noti for notifications in the future for when I release other videos, join the Discord server to let me know what you'd like to see, have a discussion, and join other people that are interested in the same things as you. If you did not like this video, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, stick around, and see if these videos get any better for science. I didn't want to actually screw up my Windows installation. And I remember that I actually have a partition, a Windows partition on my laptop. Um, so it turns out that Lenovo doesn't really update their firmware very well on uh, Linux. And so I actually leave the Windows partition with just a very little bit of room so that we, uh, so that I can open it up and update the things. So who, if you're watching this as an update, just know that I spent like two hours updating Windows <laughs> just so I could do this video. It was painful. <laughs>